Welcome back to Foulmouth Fishing. Uh, I just want to throw this quick video together um, because the seasons are changing. We're cold now, but we should get warm very shortly. And uh, one of the techniques that I like to do out on lake is uh, throw swim baits, uh, soft plastic, paddle tails, etc. And uh, any of you know who, who like glide baits and swim baits, soft plastic swim baits, you know it can get pretty dicey and expensive um, to have swim baits, especially line through swim baits. So in your tackle box you might have, um, you know, uh, a live target or you might have, more to the point, something like Savage Gear. Uh, they have their line through pike and their line through trout and, and all. And you're looking at, you know, $18, $25, $22, $16 for one bait. So a way to get around that is to use some of your simple soft plastics uh, that don't have the tackle uh, equipped and make your own line through tackle. So you can take things um, as simple as like a paddle tail, a little soft plastic paddle tail. Um, this one's like a, a six inch. Um, some more intricate soft plastic uh, paddle tail swim baits. Um, and even I'm going to use this little guy here as a demo. Um, but you can turn these into a line through uh, plastic swim bait running whatever treble hook that, uh, that you want. Like I've done here with this one. So you've got my line goes through, straight through. Now I put in mine a little bit of a, a weight, either a tungsten or a lead uh, bullet weight or a barrel weight, just to add a little more belly weight to it so that as it's swimming, it will swim pretty parallel to the water column. Uh, I don't tend to like, uh, you know, leaving them completely weightless, but that's just me. Uh, I like to have a little bit of weight when I'm when I'm cranking them through the water, um, and it also changes the wobble. You know, you can you can adjust it. You can learn to adjust how you want it to settle in the water column, whether you want it to uh, tip down, sit flush, tip up, all just by varying where in the belly of the soft plastic you happen to throw in a little eight ounce weight, uh, which is what I'll be using today—a little eight ounce lead lead weight, or I might even go to this uh, slightly heavier barrel barrel weight um, but it's a pretty simple process the things you're gonna need is whatever your favorite soft plastic is it could be a Kitek um, these are a little bit nicer versions I mean they're very this is a very spongy soft plastic I can't off the top of my head think of the company that makes this one but uh, I have a bunch of those um, but it doesn't have to be an expensive uh, swim bait and with these you tend to get you know six in a package four in a package for five or six dollars as opposed to one uh, you know, Savage Gear uh, line through for twenty-two dollars. Um, you're going to need a straw. A lot of the DIY people they'll use um, the straws you get in in like you know uh, Dunkin' Donuts or or um, Wawa, Seven Eleven for your coffee stir. Now I don't use those because I tend to not like them. They're they're a very thin walled straw, and what I use is actually the straw off of a canned air uh, a duster. Um, they're a lot thicker gauge plastic, a lot thicker wall uh, diameter inside. Um, and what I do is first I take a razor blade and I cut an angle, you know, basically a little 45 or 33 degree angle on the tip of the straw. And I position it in the nose of the bait and I'm going to Figure out what direction I want to go. Now, you want to base the treble hook size to your bait. You obviously don't want a huge treble hook. You're just going to catch a lot of muck. You try. I try to get my trebles to basically marry up to the belly of the body of the bait. So there's just that little bit of exposure on either side of the bait um, for a hook for a hook set. But it's not so protruding that uh, it's going to catch on every snag going. Um, I like to position it so also my treble hooks will come out of the bait close as close to the tail as possible within whatever I feel like comfortable uh, comfortably for the the swim pattern that I'm going for. So I'm just going to push this in, and as you're pushing, you want to give it slight little twists. Now that that little edge that you've put on the straw acts as a cutting utensil, so it clears the soft plastic out of the way which allows you to have a much cleaner hole. Um, 
So now you see there, I've got it pushed all the way through, pretty much following this transition, this, this uh, design. I'm going to have this probably weighted so it'll sit. As I'm swimming it through, it'll be fine. If I let it settle, it should sink down and lay flat like a, you know, like a feeding bait fish. Um, next thing you're going to need is your line. I'm going to use this right off the spool. I'll put a snap swivel on mine so that I can just snap to it anytime I want and change it out easily. Uh, so we're just going to run this down. Occasionally you do have some soft plastic that gets bunged up in it. Sometimes you got to poke that soft plastic out of the way so that you can feed your line down. And the beauty of doing things straight away and not doing some preset rigged unit. So we'll run our line through the straw. Now I leave the straw exposed all the way to the end. I leave, I leave the extra sitting off. I'll, I'll clean that up later. Um, but I'll run this down. I'll tie my treble hook on. But before I tie my treble hook on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that weight on. So I'll use this little 16th uh, bullet weight. Put that on the onto the, uh, the line. Then I'm going to tie my treble hook on. Cut off my tag end. Okay. Now here comes the fun part. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back the straw out just enough to seat this weight into the meat of, of this soft plastic bait. So I'm just going to back it out ever so slightly and push this uh, lead weight into the belly of the fish. Like so. Alright. You don't want to go too far like I just did. Alrighty. So now my weight is set into the meat of the fish. I can draw my treble up as far as I want to go. I can tuck that treble hook up and in. Now what I do is I take, I cut off my excess because I'm going to figure out how much I want as a leader between my, uh, my hook. And this is what I, I do, which is a little different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this straw, I'm going to poke it back out. All right. I know how far, I pinch off, I know how far I want the straw to be. I'm going to take it off of the line, and I'm going to cut it so that it'll be flush with the nose of that bait. And then I'll put it right back on and shove it into position. And the reason I leave the straw in here on the line is twofold. Okay, one, it allows this line once the hook has has got into the fish and the fish takes it, the bait can come off and it allows the, the bait to to swing free. So it's not going to act. I know a lot of people they just um, they'll take a sewing needle or something and they'll just shove the line through the soft plastic. The problem that I see with that is the numerous times you'll hook up with a fish this line is now going to act like a saw and it's going to keep cutting and cutting and, and sawing through the bottom of the soft plastic or through the top of the soft plastic. By leaving that piece of tubing inside, the piece of the straw, it gives a reinforcement that this line can slide through without being abrasive or cutting into the soft plastic itself. It's going to add so much more longevity to the soft plastic bait once you've hooked up to a fish. Okay, and then you can just simply, you know, re reset your, your treble hook after you've taken your fish off. Alright. And then, like I say, I'm just going to tie a, uh, a barrel swivel to the end of mine so that I can use a quick connect uh, whenever I want to change out this bait for a different one or vice versa. You can, of course, str uh, run this straight off your lead line, off of your reel. You don't have to do... Um, you know, taking it through the, uh, 
through the process of putting a, a swivel on. Um, I just do it for my convenience to make it speedy changeovers when I'm out on the lake or out fishing for whatever reason. Which makes it easier on me. Alrighty. course if I was doing this um, straight to my line I put an FG knot on braid and then I'd run this as a leader off of that FG knot but that simple you've got yourself a treble hooked line through bait that can come off freely once you've hooked up it's not going to damage the bait you're going to have a lot more longevity it's a belly weighted bait now with that little sinker in there so that when it's swimming it will swim more true That'll settle down, you know, into the soft, if, if you have a heavy enough weight or you don't have a lot of current, it'll settle down nicely on the bottom. Um, you can certainly hook your treble into the meat of the fish if you don't want all three trebles exposed. Simply punch that in, line it up, pull it tight. Now you've got your, your two exposed hooks and then your third one buried inside. Um, some of the baits that you can use, specifically like uh, like these here, they'll have that hook opening, that 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 little um, cut in the in the top of the bait. With those, what I like to do is I will run my straw through. I'll run my plastic straw through. I will then take a, a sewing needle or another piece of plastic straw, and I will poke that and and intersect the straw. And then what I do is I will take a, a regular hook, either a worm hook, a little offset or whatever, something that, that's, that's nice, a circle hook, and I'll run that down so that the hook eye lines up with the intersection. And I will offer this tube up to the hook eye. And then I'll run my line through the hook eye and then out, tie on my treble. And then you'll have uh, you know, a hook on the top and your treble coming through the bottom so you get that extra hookup ratio. Um, like I say, the only difference between my DIY and a lot of others is I leave that straw inside. Again, that's so that once the hook is caught in the fish's mouth, it allows the, the line to, to break free, and you're not going to end up with a, a sawing action where this bait can just get cut down the middle. Um, I also, like I say, I like to, you can see it probably better in this one, I like to keep that weight inside so that it's a little bit more true. Uh, true fishing, but uh, yeah, it's a simple line through system to take what would be a three pack or a four pack for six or eight bucks of uh, um, some soft plastic baits or using Kytex, uh, you can use those, and turning them into a line through swim bait rather than spending the ridiculous amounts of money that you'll spend uh, online or going to Bass Pro Shops or whatever and getting, say, Savage Gear or any of the other tackle companies that have their line through systems. Um, Again, it's just it's a simple way to save a heck of a lot of money um, rather than than buy the pre-rigged system, and it's something anybody can do. And like I say, I just I don't like this the coffee stirrer because the walls are so thin. As you're trying to protrude it through the soft plastic, it can kink, uh, it can cause you problems. Um, using something as simple as the extra, you know, after you've emptied out your duster. Um, I'm sure we all have, you know, electronics, we all have our little duster units that we keep to clean up our computer, laptops, etc. Once you, you're done with that, save the straw. Cut a little angle off of it with a razor blade, pokes through like butter. Twisting it as you go makes it a lot easier and keeps it true. I mean, the main focus is trying to keep a nice, true, straight line down the center of the bait. You don't want your, your line coming off either way because then it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a bad action, a bad wobble. But you do those simple steps. Save yourself a heck of a lot of money, um, and then you can throw these. I'll be throwing this shortly out in the lake. Um, definitely catch me some some largemouth or maybe some musky. Who knows? Not not on these little tiny ones, but on the bigger ones, I'll definitely try throwing for some musky. Um, hope you enjoyed. Hope you take this information. I hope it helps you out. Maybe you can try these at home with some all old swim baits, some old Kytex, some old paddle tails um, that you might have lying around. Again, if you have a paddle tail bait and the head's broken off, you can cut it, 
and use this line through process to do the same thing effectively or you can put it onto you know a swim jig if you have a swim jig but uh it's another way to, to keep more longevity in the baits and save you money because you're going to be using the bait for a lot more uses than just simply hook it on a hook throw it out it gets beat up and then you throw it away and that's the key for me saving money extending the life of my baits um this has been foul mouth fishing if you enjoyed this Tell me in the comments below if you have any suggestions of things you want me to explain or see or delve more in depth with. Uh, leave those in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and share this video. Um, and again, when we reach 1,000 subscribers, uh, I'm looking forward to dropping a nice little thank you to any of the participants, any of the subscribers. You'll be entered to win, and I'll get in contact with you or I'll at least make a post to let you know either on my Facebook and my uh my Twitter and my um, obviously YouTube and you get in contact with me with your address and I will mail off the, uh, the prize to you. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this informs you a little bit, gives you some ideas. Uh, don't forget to check out some of my other options. Uh, I did a video on how to save money on fishing gloves so you don't have to spend the 20, 30, 40 dollars on a pair of fishing gloves. You can do the same thing for 10 or 15 bucks. Um, I have videos on making the Tokyo rig, uh, and I'm going to put out more and more content as the weeks go by and as the weather changes, and then we'll start doing some uh, cast and catch videos where you can see me out actually fishing with some of the things that I make and a lot of the tackle that I already own. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. Take care.